Hello and welcome to the Peanut Gallery Podcast with Emily and Tegan. This is our third episode and we're back, baby. Episode three, Woo! baby. We're so freaking excited. Thank you guys who are returning. Yes. Thank you to anybody who's new. I can't believe the things we've learned during this process. We've like gotten so many trial and errors with a, first of all, let's dress a new set. New set. Yes. Would you even believe it? And new mics, new mics. Like, and so last time we had the new mics, but we didn't know you had to speak to the front of them. Weird thing, you know. Um, we spoke to the sides. The audio was a little bit messed up, but we're hoping that today you guys can appreciate that the audio is actually good. Yeah. We gaslit you into thinking, yes, last episode was actually good when it wasn't. No. Fully gaslit you there. Sorry for the manipulation, but today will be way better. Um, yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> it feels so professional with the new lights and everything. Like. Everything. Oh, and we have new lights and we're going to get like a little something something for up on this little a surprise brick. art piece. But yeah, I'm so excited to be back today. I know a lot of people probably thought they're never going to do a third episode. We're doing one. Yeah, we're here. We're almost to a month worth of episodes. I know. That's Isn't crazy. That crazy. Well, I wonder when we'll do a season two, like because season one, season two. Probably just every year. Yeah. I would say. I would say just like Maybe every, every 20 like, episodes. I feel like yeah, 20 is a good cutoff. Yeah. Yeah. 20 school. Add a little something to the set each season. Yeah. Okay. That'd be cute. 20 episodes then. We're almost. Uh, if we get there, the maybe way. we'll die before then. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I don't want to speak that. No, we're not going to speak that into existence. We'll just leave it out of the episode. Me and Tegan are in a funk today. We're so tired. We are feeling. I'm like not in the dead. space to entertain today, but no. we're going to try to warm up. We're probably going to try to just be like a little bit more, <laughs> maybe not more cash. Silly, but a little bit more cash, more cash today. Cash vibe. Um, we added a little Louise. If you know Bob's Burgers, if you're a video watcher, video listener, you see her. Uh, if you don't, it's Louise from Bob's Burgers, my favorite show. I won it yesterday at what is it called? Dave and Buster's. I won it in a claw machine. What yeah. else happened to you yesterday? Why don't you tell the people? Let us share. Let us share what happened yesterday. I guys, guys, I really want to set the tone and kind of start this story off real sweet, right? Mm -hmm. Yesterday. I had the plan to go bowling my little sister's birthday, you know, a little bowling sesh. And I walk outside to go get her at like 2.30. I had to be there by 2.45-ish, like max. I had to be there, you know. Walk out, car's gone. Want to remind you guys I drive a Kia. Want to remind you the Kia boys are still fully in action, correct? Yes. And when she called me to tell me about what was going on, she said she walked out and her car wasn't there. Immediately was thinking the Kia boys got her. Yep. Kia boys got her. That was my first thought because I didn't even think. It could be a repossession yet again. I know I've talked about my financial issues on TikTok. I've mentioned my repossession issues. Mm -hmm. I had another repossession, which didn't make sense because I've actually been making my payments, which is shocking. But I was like, oh, my God, my car is repossessed and I have to be somewhere in 10 minutes. Um, I'm going to go get my car, paid it, got my car back, get there to get my car back. Where do you think the worst place on earth you could see someone you know from high school is? Most definitely the repossession place. I know a lot of people think that it's like Wegmans. Like, I don't want to see my my old mm -hmm. high school people at the supermarket. No. It is the repossession lot. I'll tell you that mm -hmm. much. It is that. I walk up. Oh, my God. Hi, girl. How are you doing? Clearly not good. I'm not either. Yep. It's a very awkward situation for me. A little family. Not family. A little school high school reunion. reunion. High school reunion at the repo. I was like, let's just invite everyone here. I know no one probably we should none just one, take a picture. Yeah, we should take a picture. I think no one that went to school with us probably pays their car payments on time either. I do, but oh. I also have a child, so kind of have to have a car. Guys, I'm pouring my favorite Coca Cola cherry. Sponsor us. Um, but that wasn't the only crazy thing that happened this week either. What was that one thing that happened to me this week that was really crazy? I can't think. I've had a really rough week, guys. I don't remember. What happened to you this week? Well, this week, I actually also had some car problems. Um, so, like, two weeks ago, I brought my car in, to, and I asked them to check all the fluids. So, I just mean, like, the coolant, the transmission fluid. I just wanted everything checked, like, just to make sure everything was good, right? So, he calls me when my car is there, and he asked me, like, is anything wrong with your transmission? Like, why do you want me to check the fluid? And I'm like, well, I'm almost at 150,000 miles. If you don't know, get your shit checked. And checked. <laughs> Fuck. I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna gloss past it, but <laughs> I had to say something. But um, get your shit checked. Anyway, he called me and he was like, "We don't really have to do that, so like, I'm not gonna do it." But like, whatever. So I'm like, "Okay, cool." We go to pick up the car from the place, 
and the shit like is like skipping but for some reason i didn't think to just turn the car around like because i had already brought my baby to come with my boyfriend so we could go to the car place and we could get the car and we could do the, all this shit so i was like not trying to turn around so i'm like just letting it rock thinking it would just clear up right maybe just had to warm back up whatever the case may be <laughs> So then last week it was getting really, really bad. And like my car wouldn't break. Like I was in the car with my baby and everything. And like the shit was not breaking and it was mad scary. So um, I told my boyfriend, like, we have to go yeah. get it fixed because he's going out of town. So whatever. I just wanted to fix it before he goes out of town. We bring it in, whatever. The guy's like, oh, it should be good until Wednesday. Just like basically keep driving on it until Wednesday and we'll check it for you or whatever. Wednesday, we bring it in. He tells my boyfriend when we go to pick up the car, like, oh, you guys dodged a bullet. Like, your transmission fluid was completely empty. Your car like, would have exploded. My car would have literally exploded. Like, it would have just been, it would have been a junk piece of car. Like, I, it would, yeah. I would have just been fucked, basically. You wouldn't have even been able to resell that. But he said it's because I had no transmission fluid. Interesting how I told you to check my fucking transmission fluid. <laughs> and you didn't. And then my transmission almost went out. I did that. So how about we believe women? And, and just, just listen cars. to me. Just I w- take the extra fucking hundred dollars that you were going to take. Like, stop trying to be have integrity. I brought my car in to get my brakes and my tires done. And he ends up putting only two tires on my car. And then just thought you wouldn't notice. Weird that my tires were flat because I knew because the T- TPMS sensor is the little sensor that goes off when your tire is low. Weird that that's how I knew. And then once I get two new tires, he tells me that the TPMS sensor is permanently on unless I get it fixed. You just broke my car and are telling me I have to pay to fix it? Literally. You broke my TPMS sensor. That's not my fault. I don't. I just don't understand how these car places get over on people like so mm-hmm. crazy like that. Because like, they know we need them. And I knew. And something is kind of telling me that he like fucked my car up mm-hmm. because I'm pretty sure with my type of car, you can't check the transmission fluid without changing it. So I think he did check it and maybe didn't know that. I don't know. I'm trying to be like have, give, give him, him the benefit of the doubt but give him some grace it really, uh, it really no. kind of feels like i got scammed scammed so <laughs> I'm, i um this week was cool it was like back and forth back and forth bad i just feel like good bad good bad like i got this set up all set up and it's all cutesy and it was so fun to do and then like car repossessed like oh. It's crazy the dichotomy of the, the week. dichotomy <laughs> that was my favorite word in our unaired episode i was i said dichotomy i think five times total literally like you just kept saying it and i noticed you were <laughs> saying it and i didn't know to, if i she wanted me to tell you to stop saying it so i was just letting it rock out with her couple syllables well today in news is tiktok might get shut down how i don't know how the hell they're gonna get away with that i just feel like people are not gonna be very thrilled by their like freedom of speech being and wouldn't people just use like vpn so i heard something like a software engineer was saying you can do a vpn but it might not let you have good quality or post well yeah and guys clearly my job is tiktok i you guys have met uh excuse me sorry hold on so clearly you guys have met me through tiktok if you're at this or you've seen me on youtube reels which is a possibility but um, the likelihood that you found me through TikTok is pretty high. And so for them mm-hmm. to shut it down, it's just like, damn, my, my job would just be over. Pretty much. Good thing we started a podcast. Good thing I started a podcast. Good thing I started posting on YouTube. I have a lot of people messaging me like, what's um strategy? How did you grow on YouTube? Like, what's your strategy on shorts? Like, how do you do it? The- I'm just like, damn. Well, a lot of people are scared. Yeah. We're scared out here. Well, it's crazy that they can... Because I feel like it's so many jobs and I feel like, I don't know. It's I feel like, saved businesses. Like, yeah, it's saved businesses. And I feel like, I mean, some of the information on TikTok is, of course, bullshit. But like there yeah. is a lot I've like actually learned from TikTok that I wouldn't have so known much. if not for TikTok. Especially like on current events and stuff like that. Yeah. Like there'll be stuff about like shootings and things like that that you see on TikTok that the news won't even cover. Yeah. So much about mental health is discussed on TikTok. So much mm-hmm. about history and marginalized communities and the LGBTQ oh, yeah. community has made waves just through TikTok. I just think it would be so detrimental. There's like, and even um, Mr. Chu, who they kept saying Mr. Chu, Chu said that, you know, there's a thing called book talk and 150 million Americans like subscribe to book talk. Basically like there's a hundred, not, americans only but it's like a trend to read books now like that's such a good result or of TikTok. even like self-care 
Like I've seen like a right. lot, like the self care girlies like are blowing up, blowing like, up the spiritual journeys. But I think that there's a lot of positive. There's also a lot of so negative. Though. Positive. There is a lot of negative. I think people have lost the concept of like you would not say that to someone's face. You also like lose would, the nuance of subjects. But I don't think that that's TikTok's fault. No. I don't. Well, it's social maybe, media. In general. Maybe that. Maybe this nuance thing. But as far as like hate comments have been around, like. Yeah. The people have been saying nasty, disgusting things on the internet for a long time. I don't think TikTok had anything to do with that. Um, I think it's really also just like kids growing up with the internet so much. Like, yeah. I think it's, it's just normal to the them. internet in general is just like it can be toxic. But that's the thing is I think that the TikTok, the removal of TikTok, I feel it feels so much more financially driven for Meta to have like their moment again. Yeah. Which I don't know if you've seen the metaverse. Yeah. I've have seen, you seen it. it? It's just like a bad Wii game. Like it looks yep. like a bad like. It's Wii. like what are they called? The Mies. Oculus. The Mies. Or Mies. They look like little Mies. I think that I think that because Mark Zuckerberg is like a head honcho, I feel like he is like pressing oh, he's down. So weird looking. So weird. He speaks like a zombie. It's like just like what the hell. He makes and me Mr. believe. And Mister Chu seems so sweet. Like yeah. he actually is like the only billionaire I'll ever empathize with. In my Mark life. Zuckerberg definitely makes me feel like lizard people exist. yes yeah like he's like a time traveler he doesn't exist yeah he's scary. he um like you could peel his skin off and he'd be green yeah for like, sure like like a zombie eye yeah <laughs> like, like a little <laughs> oculus and like they eye. always show the one of like justin bieber when his eyes change to like lizard beyonce eyes. too but i beyonce. think that's just a villainized black woman we've talked about that emily yeah. how does it feel to be on unemployment unemployment <laughs> <laughs> No, but seriously, it is like my manager had texted me um, like a few months ago, actually, saying that this was kind of coming to fruition and that I should start preparing for TikTok potentially to be shut down. She kind of gave me the rundown, which is like scary to get from your manager because it's like, are you going to quit on me? Like, are you going to just like not yes. have me as a client? I mean, for sure. I think for sure. <laughs> I do love her. She's so sweet. But I know that she'd have to like part ways for her own sake kind of thing. Yeah. But we are signed for a year, so hopefully she'd still be helping me with, like... Because I still have a following on YouTube. I think that I always forget that I have 40,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is, like, a substantial amount on YouTube. And that's hard to grow on YouTube, especially yeah. when you don't really post videos. So now... Well, it's through shorts that Pina, I've grown. Right. I do well, all through, through shorts. in a gallery, you know, you have another claim to fame. And I do love that, like, with the podcast, you guys can see different versions of me. I think that with, like tiktok i can be very one like i talk about certain things like big sister advice story mm -hmm. times but there are days like this where we're just like sleepy and we're just t chatting and hanging out and like i don't mm -hmm. want to feel like it's a performance every time i'm entering the space yeah no i definitely feel like today we're kind of just like meh just but, meh. i mean y'all have had a meh day get off my nuts yeah and also it's like rainy and windy out and it's very rude of the wind because it keeps whistling in my window but yeah. Yeah, this it's just is just a good days. day where you just want to like smoke, watch a little movie, watch a little scary movie, finish a little like series on Netflix. I've been loving NCIS lately. I like Law and Order Rest of You. I don't because everybody just gets R worded, but there's no saving them from that. Like true. Nobody in that show gets like almost R worded. You know what I mean? Like I feel like Criminal Minds and NCIS, like sometimes people get like saved. Mm -hmm. But like the damage is already done on SVU. I've it been watching. I've been watching a lot of different shows. I'm like, a, if you guys follow me on Twitter, if anyone follows me on Twitter, I'm constantly, constantly posting what the shows that I watch. Right now, I'm watching the new season of Love is Blind. Mm -hmm. Terrible cast. Terrible cast. I would love for you to watch it so that we can, like, hate the girls that I hate together. I am not a huge reality show girl. Um, I really like, like, I love Bad Girls Club, though. Me too. I love Bad Girls Club. And, like, I can watch, like, Old Jersey Shore. Yeah um what's another one another reality show that i've watched kind of recently big daddy or not big daddy big brother <laughs> no i actually have never seen big brother really i don't even really understand the premise of it at i all. don't either i i um, don't watch it at all but i've heard that that's like the most popular i can't really think of any other reality tv shows right now love island is my key to my heart love island we're gonna talk about love island a little bit later in this episode but love island is like the key to my freaking heart and Love is Blind. I like any show that's just like low budget, easy to put on, bunch of hot singles, literally just chilling in the villa. Like that's my vibe. I don't yeah. know what it is. Love is Blind. Why. Like 
I feel like me, here's my problem with reality shows, is like I'll pick a season to watch, but then I'm so attached to those characters that I can't get into another season because it's just not hitting the same. That's happened to me. Actually, that literally just happened to me with Love, um, not Love is Blind, but Love Island. I don't know if any of you are from the UK, but I just watched the UK. I bought a VPN, like a $12 a week VPN, just to stay up to date with the uh, Love Island stuff for the winter season. And like last season... I loved them. Like, I love this. There's this one girl named Ekin Sue. She's, like, a Turkish, like, baddie. Like, she got with this guy, Davi Day, and he's, like, this, like, Italian stallion. Like, he's mm-hmm. just, like, perfect. But they weren't giving drama the whole season. Like, but this season, the winter season, was just so much drama. Like, it was so good. I just ate it up like a little cake. And there's this one character, Will. He's Farmer Will on TikTok. He's actually famous on TikTok. Like, you could look him up. He does, like... He looks like those claymation figures. He's the funniest fucking person that they've ever. So you know when they do reality shows, at least I feel like you probably know this. They cast per personality. Oh yeah, so like yeah. they have they specific, have like a funny guy, and yeah, like a hot guy, and then like a they have like a mark to hit on each yeah. person. He is one of those people that got casted that like you wonder how did you get through casting because you are not any of the prototype humans. He's like insane, but like in a funny way. Like, do you like? I don't know how to explain it. Just like so hyperactive, crazy, mm-hmm. always dancing, like always crazy. And he got with this girl, Jesse, who is also one of those people that you like, she's a return from a different season mm-hmm. that you always think like, how did you get through casting? Like you're crazy. You're nuts. Like you're mm-hmm. so funny. And they got together and I'm so invested in their story that I just don't know if I can watch the summer season, but I do have time before the summer starts to like wow. to like get over them it's, okay all right. but i like i'm on their tiktok all the time just like what are you guys up to now now that i can't watch you every day because love island is every day for three months they should oh. air it every single day which is like unheard of like crazy yeah that is so because we're so s- sleepy today and just like literally cannot come up with subjects by ourselves <laughs> i had made a trivia for emily <laughs> With stuff that I think that she would know, but, like, stuff that's kind of hard. And if you know Emily, she kind of knows. Like, I did reality TV shows, and I did, like, random European history. (laughs) So I am obsessed with European history for some reason. I, like, don't love Europeans, right? Like, came here and conquered, (laughs) and that's terrible. But for some reason, because it dates so far back, I'm so intrigued by how much you can learn about the past from the Europeans. Yeah. so I think it's cool. I like know so much random stuff about oh, the royal family and like Europe. Yeah. <laughs> Just Europe in general. OK, so I have. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven questions. That's okay. not bad. That's not bad. Um, We'll try not to dwell on each answer for too little long, trivia game. A little trivia game. <laughs> All right. So question one is in what year did Keeping Up with the Kardashians first air? 2003. No, that's too early. 2005 too early 2007 girl oh that was gonna be my next guess well you only get i thought it was 2003 <laughs> i already gave you too many <laughs> <laughs> okay this one's the european one how long did the ottoman empire last oh my god i know this answer it was it's the longest empire to ever exist ah, i want to say it's like a full thousand years no but it is long. It's 623 years, oh. approximately, like give or take a year. So that's not bad. So, so well, I was kind of close. I mean, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was bad. <laughs> I was closer to a thousand than zero. So right. I was like, what if I was like, it didn't ever exist? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm just gasly. Well, I do know that that was like the longest ever existing empire. And it was also like what Europe was up until literally like the 19 something 1900s yeah. something okay so question three how many seasons are there of Jersey Shore 12 they're still going though so I wouldn't know oh well my source said six what so maybe that maybe six OG series seasons yeah I think like six like OG yeah maybe, like, maybe including sense. like Italy though I don't know but my sister's obsessed with Jersey Shore I'm kind of anti Jersey Shore because of that it's I liked Jersey Shore at first because it felt inappropriate to watch when I was young and I was like mm-hmm. mm, it's so inappropriate but as an adult it's all my sister watches I so I resent it I had such a big it. crush on Sammy oh my god I had a big crush on Vinny oh yeah and Vinny too Sammy and Vinny were my fave but I have like five family members named Vinny so it always has kind of weirded me out that it's kind of weird my grandpa my cousin and my uncle are literally all Vinny it's like get a new name maybe yeah. Vincent doesn't have to be every name in the family. No, not that great of a name. 
Um, okay, here's another one, uh, reality TV. How, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Who was the winner of American Idol season four? Famous girl, I'll tell you that. Jordan Sparks. No. Reich or <laughs> <laughs> No. Kelly Clarkson. No, she's she was the first one. She was season one, Kelly Clarkson. Jordan Sparks was like two thousand ten though. That's probably mm-hmm. why I'm thinking that. Oh my god, I'm kind in of in between. So in between Jordan Sparks and Kelly Clarkson, another really famous lady came from it. It's not Mariah Carey. No. Jessica Simpson. No. Carrie Underwood. What? I thought I said that! <laughs> no, no, you didn't. <laughs> well, oh, oh, oh. Got lipstick oh, in my oh, Valentino oh, bag. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Carrie Underwood. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Before He Cheats. All right. What children's song is associated with the Black Plague? Ring around the rosy. Yes, <laughs> finally, one for one. Okay. I'm going to give myself the Ottoman <laughs> okay. My own ego. All right. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, here's another one. So these last two are reality. Okay. So the first one is, what country did Big Brother first air in? Oh, fuck, I don't watch Big Brother, but I'm assuming... Uh, think of a different one. <laughs> If you're assuming something, think something else. Was it Latin American? Mm-mm. Europe. I'll tell you Europe. Um, mm, <laughs> Spain. <laughs> no. <laughs> the Netherlands. Ah. And then this one, hopefully you get this one. Who was the first host of American Idol? Oh, Simon Cowell. I know all of them. Of American Idol? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> I'm like Randy. I just office you like <laughs> and Paula, Miss Paula Abdul. Oh, Paula Abdul. I feel so bad for her because like she had someone come on the show that was obsessed with her. Did you ever hear this? And then he went to her house and like Oh, I did know that. Yeah. Like Did you know um the song Work Out by J. Cole samples a Paula Abdul song? Oh, I love her. Shout out her. I don't know if you want to do trivia for me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, me. But um Tegan is obsessed with like or at least was like One Direction oh, and like yeah. boy bands. I was so obsessed with One Direction and boy bands. But I found a One Direction quiz. I didn't read any of the answers. Like I read like the first two questions, but I didn't read the answers. So <laughs> she's been studying. <laughs> Me cheating. <laughs> she has a notes cheating. page. <laughs> Hold on. Wait. Open the link. How are you following her? Here we go. Let me go. Jesus Christ. Okay. So you're obviously not going to know the answers to these either, but I don't know. I don't even know all the names of the One Directioners. Okay. Zane, Malik, Harry. Oh, this is 25 Liam. questions. That's kind of a lot. We'll have to. We'll, I don't know if it's going to tell you. You'll have to see if it'll tell you the answer when you click on it or not. Because okay. if it doesn't, we're just going to rapid fire. And I'm just going to go with my gut. Perfect. Okay. Which member of One Direction came up with the name? I have no idea. Niall. It doesn't tell me. Who had the most solos on their debut album all <laughs> up all night? I'm having a little bit of a stroke. I feel like Liam. They used to start every song with Liam. I don't remember that song. Why doesn't it tell you your answer? Okay, who had <laughs> who had the least solos on the debut album up had all night? It had to be night? Louis. It had to be Louis. Had to be Louis. He sucked. Okay, when I'm just kidding, Louis. I'm sorry. And I'm I sorry about your sister. I only liked um Harry and Zane just like everyone oh, else, Zane, I feel like in yes. the world. And when when did the band go on? I think I'm smart, and then like I can't read. Am I something okay. wrong with me? We're not popcorn reading. Take your time. When did the band go on an extended break to concentrate on their solo careers? I think 2015. I think so too. Actually, I think that was like a headlining news. Well, I think in 2015 they announced that they were going to go on a hiatus, and then in 2016 they were like, "Yeah, we're actually breaking up." And wasn't it like all? Niall's fault or Liam Zane is the first one who left but who's the one who said like I was the first one to be picked and I'm like the best person ever he oh, went on Logan Liam Pulse. Payne he looks terrible now he's did like you see so the, full of himself did you see the video of his jaw now he got like jaw filler he looks he's like so full of himself and I actually like hate that and he actually like failed the first year like the first year he went and auditioned didn't make it and then the second year he went and back. it was so clearly harry that carried like i just feel like yeah if harry you didn't Zane. know yeah if you didn't know anything about one direction you knew about harry style still mm-hmm. and, and like you still do period and i had posters of him and i didn't even fucking like one direction he was cute though Her. So Zane. he still is on which talent show did the members meet 
Oh, uh, X Factor. X Factor. What was the first song that they sang at the judge's house? Torn, I think. Oh, my God. You knew it. <laughs> I didn't even read <laughs> no, the option. I'm torn. What That's was the title of One Direction's debut single? What Makes You Beautiful? Yeah. That's what makes you beautiful. Uh. Okay. <laughs> how many albums have they released? I don't released? know how that hook. How that song hooked me to loving them. I that song sucks. Compared to the rest of their music, it sucks. I don't like boy bands at all. I don't like the million I voices do. in one I'm song. I'm such a boy band girl. Like Backstreet Boys. I wanted to be so bad. I, wanted I to fit would in. literally, when I tell you right now, I would do anything for a Backstreet Boy, Like to meet the Backstreet Boys, I would fall to my knees and cry. I wanted to be a boy band lover so bad because my sister grew up with the Backstreet Boys too. Like, and in sync and all that. I was never an instinct girl, but Backstreet Boys, bro. I wanted to be, but I couldn't. I had all the CDs and everything. I liked, um, for some reason, growing up, what, like, you know, it's so funny to me. I feel like music is kind of like hereditary, like what you like. Like, I grew up liking what my mom liked, but not because she listened to it, like Alicia Keys. Beyonce that no like that sound of like a soulful singer songwriter mm -hmm. has always been what I like and then it branches into like I like folky music like I like yeah. like lumineers like I don't know I just like a little something well I like a little sing song me too I can't lie I like a song I like everything song. though I really like anything yeah me too like I like a lot of like really old like soft rock type music yeah I like I like country music I like rap music I like everything really I really love what Miley Cyrus is doing with bringing back like the 70s 80s sound oh, oh she's, she's so hot she's so talented I remember people used to doubt her singing voice so hard but she's no. so good she's mm -mm. so good she's always been that girl She's really that girl. Like, I remember she used to kind of make songs that didn't show her vocal, perform like, her vocal range. And now it's just, like, her voice has just found itself. Her mm. new album is sickening. I, like, stayed up all night listening to it when it came out. And it came out this week, I think, this week. So um, that's news. I haven't listened to it yet, but that shout is, out Miley Cyrus. Yeah, that is information. If I'm being honest, I really don't feel like doing that quiz anymore. <laughs> 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 so if anybody knows the right answers i guess in the comments let me know but i don't feel like doing it i don't feel like thinking that much anymore maybe so we'll like, surprise them at the end and tell them how many you got right they're probably gonna comment be like no you're into this. <laughs> <laughs> all the louis girls are gonna come from my neck i'm sorry he just wasn't that girl at the time i just i i just never saw the the hype in liam or louis i just thought they were just not it <sighs> And I remember Niall before his braces. People used to bully him so bad. And then he got like those clear, nasty ass braces. I hate clear braces. That is the worst. Just get some fucking metal braces in your mouth and call it a day. I, I hate, hate clear, clear braces. braces. I it's know like this black. one girl. I know this one girl I've talked about here on the podcast before. And she had clear braces and it just looked like this gunk build up. Like That's it just exactly. looks and like same same with like Invisalign. I knew a girl when I was in like fifth grade, her parents got her Invisalign instead of braces. Oh my god. Rich. Um, and I used to always be staring in her mouth mad hard when she would talk because I'm like, what is that what is line that? below what your teeth? That? Like I had Invisalign and you have to like crack them out of your mouth to like eat. And it's so gross because my biggest thing, my biggest ick in life is saliva. I don't know what it is. You could fart in my face. You could poop in my mouth. Like maybe I shouldn't say that, but you could not dribble saliva on me and me not throw up physically. I can't, I can't handle saliva. So when I had to like crack out my viz line and then see old buildup of saliva like it truly put me in a different dimension i think yeah that's actually really nasty it was like i, I lost was, my clear retainer so long ago for my braces i, I think everyone does i think that's like a coming of age but my teeth have definitely shifted since losing it my you teeth do. have definitely shifted no you have like, like nice this tooth right here is like crooked like it's like eat. i grew up with really crooked teeth and but I yeah like so that. i had always really really <laughs> crooked teeth and I finally was able to get myself Invisalign when I was like 19. It was like this huge thing to me to like finally have straight teeth, like being made fun of for having crooked teeth my whole life and then finally have straight teeth. But I just stopped caring about it. All of a sudden, like it didn't matter to me anymore. Well, it's crazy because like your teeth are crooked. I'm not going to be like, your teeth aren't even crooked. Yeah. But your teeth are crooked. But like, I feel like crooked teeth, depending. I mean, if you have shark teeth, like maybe. Yeah. You know, you know go see an orthodontist or like if it's hindering your health or anything but yeah. like your teeth look fine they're white they're taken care of like they're straight enough like and they add character to your face i think yeah i think like like me i feel like i don't know like i like my teeth but i kind of miss my gap like i miss having a gap my daughter has a gap 
Yeah, my nephew has a gap, and I think that it's like super cute on him, his little gap. But I yeah. did, I definitely grew up wanting to have like straight teeth, especially my bottom teeth. I had really overcrowded bottom teeth, and I don't have the same bottom teeth that I did before because they haven't shifted fully back. I don't think that they probably will because yeah. it's been three years now. But when they were straight all the way across, I remember at first I was like, this is so cool. Like, this is so awesome. And then I was just like, I just stopped caring. Like, I clearly didn't care enough about that insecurity to like keep yeah. up with it. So I was just like, you know what? I really don't care enough. I still have all my retainers downstairs. I could literally shift my teeth back if I wanted to. But the pain and like the having to brush your teeth like six times a day, it's just not worth it for me. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that braces pain, bro. I remember I went to the doctor. I went to the orthodontist with a gap. And in three hours, I no longer had a fucking gap in so my teeth. So scary. I'm like, I'm scared. No wonder this hurts so bad. Like, yep. well, they're literally moving around in your gums. Like, it's so, so fast. It hurts so bad. And I would shove, like, so with Invisalign, you have, like, every two weeks, you switch your retainer. And each one is a little closer to your wanted mm-hmm. smile. And... I would skip ahead four weeks so that I could get there in half the time, which is really bad for your teeth. Like, do not do that because mm-hmm. you will like shift them too fast. They could fall out. But I shifted them. It was supposed to be a six month period because my teeth weren't like I'm not I'm exaggerating. They weren't like that bad. But I got them done in three months because I would skip ahead and like sh- shove them down on my teeth. And like my teeth would shift so fast and they'd be so sore I couldn't even chew. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say it. I lost a little bit of weight on Invisalign because of the fact that I just didn't want to eat. Literally couldn't eat. <laughs> like, I remember when so I got my tongue pierced, I lost weight too because I couldn't eat anything. I always like thought tongue piercings were cool, but I'm so They do not fucking hurt. Ugh. It does not hurt. Nipple piercings don't hurt either. And everyone says, Oh, my nipple hurt piercings were the worst thing in my life. And I, I know it sounds so like your nipple piercings don't hurt. Like it, okay, strong nipple. But they really don't. It's just like they're piercing through almost like fat. Yeah, my nose didn't hurt. My tongue didn't hurt. I had to take my tongue out when I was giving birth. The lady told me my ears to. hurt. My ears are the one thing that hurt. Like my nose, I've had done four times, but my ears like substantially worse than your nipples. Hmm. Substantially. So if you're thinking about getting your nipples pierced, it's really not bad. Like it's just kind of like a weird feeling. If anything, like all of a sudden you have this freezing cold bar inside of your nipple, and like yeah. you can feel that. Yeah, that's It's weird. exactly how it sounds is exactly how it feels. Yeah. I um I tried to get my belly button pierced. When I first got my tongue pierced, I was actually going to try to get my belly button pierced. I was on my lunch break at beauty school. And um they told me I was too chubby. Told me I was too chubby to get my belly pierced. What? So I was like, All right, well can you do my tongue? And they were like, Yeah. So they did my tongue instead. They told you that you were too chubby to get your belly button yeah. pierced? She told me that I was too chubby to get my belly button pierced. That is shocking. I was like, I got fat shamed bad. That makes, it makes more sense someday. to not be able to do it on someone too skinny. There's nothing to for them to pinch to be able to shove the needle through. I watched someone oh. get their belly button pierced and pass out. Oh. And I thought that was a little bit dramatic, but I also watched someone get a script. Do you remember when we went to the city and that girl got script tattoo in that random tattoo shop and she screamed on the top of her lungs? It was <coughs> under her boob. <coughs> oh, I thought it was on her arm. It was under her boob. She screamed on the top of her lungs. So we have Pepper now sitting with me. Is he giving me kisses? Tegan had to go potties. Because I don't know if y'all know this, but well, actually. So I'm a mom. So that's part of the reason why I always pee my pants when I cough and sneeze. <laughs> but it's also because when I was younger, I used to get like chronic UTIs, like really bad. So I had to do a catheter twice so they could like test like what was going on. So ever since I was like less than 10, I've pretty much peed my pants almost every time I sneeze or cough. I got chronic UTIs two years ago. I kept getting them over and over and over again. And I didn't know why. I'd never had them in my life up until I was 21. And then all of a sudden I started getting them like every single month I'd have a UTI so then I went to the doctor finally after being like prescribed like six times UTI medicine I'm like dude what's the problem with me because I'm like not doing anything different like I'm drinking a lot of water like I'm working out there's no reason I should be getting UTIs they're like oh we must miss this you've had a kidney infection for six months nice that could have gone septic if I hadn't gone like that day for sure and so they were like we need to put you on like um antibiotics and I'm like duh like i have a kidney infection duh and so they put me on these antibiotics and i don't i'm not receiving them like i don't my body's not receiving them properly so i had a kidney infection for almost a year and they didn't ever do anything and then all of a sudden i have ibs i'm like that has to be some sort of like something to do with my internal yeah my internal has to be some sort of messed up but Mm. ultimately i'm just writing it out just seeing what happens so like 
same thing that's in your throat that like blocks the tubes like so your food goes the right direction uh you have one in your kidney so that your pee doesn't shoot back up in your kidney my valve doesn't work oh. so like if the pee tries to go back into my kidney it's gonna get there basically so oh that's why God. i have to make sure i'm always empty and like everything like that that's why I always get back pain because of it. Oh, my like, God. I hope I pee too long or I'll feel back pain because I'll feel it traveling back up the tube. And that can, it's, like. Well, it's just not good for your kidneys. Yeah. It's, I was going to say that can be really bad. I know that you guys are going to be like, wow, this podcast episode is, like, the least entertaining one yet. We are so sleepy. We are so tired. We are so, like. And it sucks because we're so excited about this new set. So we really wanted to come in with a bang for you I guys. I know. We were just talking on the phone, like, this is going to be our best episode. And we're literally just, like, drained. Drained. Today. I don't know what my problem is. I think that we both are a little neurodivergent. <laughs> I think that maybe we're just having an off day. And it's funny that it was happening on the same day. I was I'm glad it's happening I was just about to say I'm day. happy it's happening on the same day. We both were putting our makeup on. Like, why is our makeup on going like sh- like going on like shit? Like, why are we not having funny jokes? Because I would have felt bad if like you were having a day and I was having like the best day of my life. Oh my god, I would have been feeling so insecure if my if I had joke after joke and they just weren't landing with you. I would have wanted to die. Yeah, but I, I have like, no jokes. <laughs> both of our, one of our makeup was going on beautifully, the other one looked like shit. I'm just like, on ten. We both You're like just shit. on ten. I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly i'm glad that at least we're both having a weird day so that if our jokes aren't landing it's because neither of us have any jokes right now i literally am empty <gasps> praise god baby i'm empty we My still are loving theo vaughn last episode we talked a little bit about theo vaughn still are loving him he's just like not right now what we're talking about i think i go through phases <laughs> of like words i like and right now on nuts is one i like to say on nuts that's what i like right now um do you I have a word, really... of a word of the week a word of the week um no, not right now. Um, not off the top of nog. Not off, no, definitely not off the top of nog. I do. I was talking about this earlier. I say this thing to my dog because I like to say silly goose. I don't know why. I used to not swear. It's actually like a weird fact about me. Like when I was like seventeen to nineteen, I went through like this like. <laughs> I went through like this Christian awakening where I was going to church all the time. We have since changed that a little bit, but I like stopped. Uh, cursing for two years and that was really weird. And then weird. you realized God didn't care? And then I was like, well, weird, God like killed all of my family and <laughs> made life just suck for me. It's like kind of weird. I still believe he in God. He better when you curse. He likes when you're true to yourself. Yeah, he does. And <coughs> I, actually, I actually do think that way. I think the more true to yourself then, then God is more you know, happy with what you're doing. But I, I still believe in God. I still believe in like some higher power, but I don't delegate myself to Christianity or any of that. No. I was baptized Catholic raised Christian and then I had like this serious rebirth of Christianism when I was homeless because I felt like it was a hope for me anyways during that time I learned to say silly goose so I always have said silly goose since and now I just say goose I said my pepper's a little goose but I always say silly goose too I, I say, say silly it goose a lot. all the time yeah I say it a lot I feel like I like like especially if he does something stupid I'll be like ah oh, you silly goose <laughs> I like nuts ah nuts and I like to call people bananas I love to say your bananas. Oh. I, don't know why. I say nuts bananas though. Together. Nuts bananas. <coughs> Sorry, mm, buddy, yeah. Uh, Fun fact about me. I've talked about this quite a bit. I don't smoke weed anymore. I used to smoke weed all the time. It was like my favorite pastime hobby. I can't anymore. I'm so paranoid. And it's sad because Tegan obviously receives it very well and is like good with it. But I cannot hang. Like I'm I'm funny when I'm high or drunk, <laughs> but I am. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> <My God. laughs> I'm funny when I'm high because I'm like a little bit not there, but I'm not able to participate in conversation, um, participate <laughs> in eye contact. Be a functional member of society. <laughs> not. I mouth breathe so bad when I'm zoinked. I'm like, <sighs> I don't like being zoinked and being cold. Like if I'm zoinked and I'm cold, it's immediately going to make me panic. But if I'm, I'm the like same way. nice and cozy, I'm good to go. No, I'm the same way. I immediately take my makeup off as soon as I'm zoinked. I get in the shower because I have to be warm in the heat of the shower. Warm oh, no. Showering takes it away from me. It makes me feel I like shower I'm before. I like to shower and eat before I smoke because if you do it after, both those things sober you up. So it's like I just smoke for no reason. I do love to eat. I think that's another reason I stopped smoking is because I like was on a fitness wellness journey at one point. Which, oh my God, I should talk about that. I was on one and I was eating so much. Like, I, I'm not the type of person that just gets munchies. I get like destroyed. Oh, I remember. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Dude, we the way we used to eat in the ingredient household, bro. I was the a mess. The peanut butter sandwich. We one time we were making a peanut butter sandwich when we were zoinked and we like looked at it in the refrigerator light and we were like, oh my God. 
God, that looks so good. That <laughs> looks so take aesthetically pleasing. It just took a picture. We both posted it on Instagram. <laughs> 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 like in the middle of the night, like peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> we thought we were so cool. We're like, people didn't think we were so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I <high>, did. <laughs> I used to make Tegan record me like hitting like an old school like pipe. Like, no, we talked about it before the Frosty the Snowman corn cob pipe. I literally used to make her like record me t- hitting it. And I have a video where I'm like, did you record that? <laughs> <laughs> that is the funniest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> did you but, record it? I remember I used to record, Um, I've always just been the person out of the spotlight no i'm just kidding but i used to record um jared's vines for him mm-hmm. and i remember one time you could hear me in the background go go <laughs> i love when, the people- when he watched it back he was so mad he's like take it you can hear you say go <laughs> like i'm sorry i love hearing that on tiktok when people are like go <laughs> to me for some reason you wanted the vine was like i'm crying actually the vine was um he wanted to take one of those like huge um icicles that you find outside like one of the big daddy ones <laughs> and smack it on his head in his room like he just wanted to do it for the vine what? Like, literally do it for the vine and <laughs> we literally i'm like recording i'm like three two one go. <laughs> and then he's like okay <laughs> So Vine was such a time, and I always reference vines, and no one gets them anymore because we're like old now. We're I like know. old. Vine, we miss Vine. Like Vine was yeah, is like showing like your Vine. age now. Like when I talk about Vine, people are kind of like, okay, old ass bitch. Like, what are you talking about? But like I said on my video where I was talking about quitting nicotine, I said that one hurted, and everyone's comments were hurt it is not work. Hurt it is not work. Um. It's a fucking reference. You better get your fucking hands off me before, before I fucking I rip, before I fucking rip your face off, bitch. bitch. This bitch wanna step on my fucking cowboy girl boots, girl. I, I f- Wait, you remember that said, one? Yeah, this bitch gonna step on my fucking toe, girl, with the fucking cow cowboy girl fucking with, boots, bitch. bitch disgusting. disgusting. <laughs> or another one of my favorite favorite viral videos is when she's like, she's like. I don't see my baby daddy nowhere. I don't see my baby daddy nowhere. I hope she's ready to die about that dick because I'm ready to go to war for it. <laughs> I'm ready to go to war for it. Yo, that shit is so funny, bro. I just recently found her on TikTok again. I'm like, that's my girl. <laughs> I like the one. Um, what was the TikTok that I or the Vine that I like? You were just talking the one you were talking about earlier. Cody Cole when he's like, <laughs> "Man, this looks this guy looks so beautiful right now. I just wish I could show it to <laughs> you did. somehow." This burger I'm eating is so good right now. I wish you guys could see it. It's so good, <laughs> yo, that shit kills me. Cody Cole is someone time. that I loved on Vine, and Zachary Piona I also loved. <gasps> yes, so much. And who was the other guy? Sud it, sud it. Oh my god! 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 Sud it. Who is that? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Who is Jared that? will watch this episode and he will know. Who was the Viner that would say, suh, dude? Sa, Tell dude. me now. Suh, Kyle. Because I can see his face in Karna my head. Karna, suh, dude. That's oh, what it was. God. That's what it was. Karna, suh, dude. That's what it was. Please comment his name because I remember his face. Oh. And I can't remember his name his right now. Nick. It's Nick Coletti. Yes. Is that who that is? Yes. Nick Coletti. Shout Nick out to Nick Coletti. Nick Coletti. I love my boy. Him. Anyone with big teeth for some reason. Or did you ever watch, um, fuck. It was like Nick Coletti. Oh, my nose is so itchy. Uh, Cody Cole. Like, they all, it was, it, what is their little show that they made? Uh, yes. Where you like, know- that baby's looking at me, dude. <laughs> you've only known him, for, <laughs> you've known him for nine years, dude. How long have you known him? Like a year? Like a month? Why is he looking at me like Why is that, that baby looking at me like that? Fuck, it's, uh. Oh, Simi Valley Bros. Yes. Bros of Simi Valley or something like that. Yes. I always come around to it. See, my brain will always get it. <laughs> Give me a second. I liked any, on Vine, I liked any man with big teeth. Matthew Espinosa loved him because he had big teeth. Oh, but he was yeah. also like O2L. Or wait, MadCon. He was MadCon. Oh, With yeah, Trevi yeah. and. Shout out Nash Greer, his little family. Have you seen I him? Like Taylor. Literally. What's her face? I don't know your last name, Miss Warm Woman. I don't know. Nash Greer was one of my like biggest crushes as a kid for some reason so ugly. i thought he was i thought Hayes I was, was, thought cuter. He was ugly. i thought Hayes was cuter now i don't really look at them and think either isn't sean mendes part of that too or no wasn't mm, he sean mendes was part of MadCon as well which is crazy because he's crazy like an international superstar 
an Not international be- superstar. <laughs> I actually was obsessed with MagCon too. I I've been such an internet girly. Like I loved Matthew Espinosa. Trevi was always so funny. She's Trevi now. Mm-hmm. Um, Matt. Why did I just connect that? That's who Trevi Moran is. Yeah, from a, from MagCon. I'm like, I know well. that name. I always knew the name. Shout out. Okay, girl. <laughs> Welcome to the sisterhood. Yes, literally. And Chevy looks so good. <coughs> her hair, the red on mm-hmm. her skin tone. I just feel like she, she's she got it. She's got it. So fish. But so very much, very camp. But I also loved Hayes and Nash Greer. I think that Hayes was more obtainable because he was more closer to our age. So I was always thinking he was so fine. Mm-hmm. But now that they're adults, objectively, they're just not my type. Like, I would just not be interested. But <laughs> not like they would be either. <laughs> but their family is so pretty. Like, their babies are so mm-hmm. cute. And the mom seems, like, just so, like, down to earthy. Like, you know who cute. I want to give a quick RIP to? Another childhood crush? <gasps> Cameron Boyce. Yes. And, um... Christina Grimmie. <gasps> Lie it, lie it. Yes. Don't cry on my shoulder. If I wanted to listen to a song when I was younger, I would search Christina Grimmie cover, cover. of. Every yes. time. Every I used time. To, oh, my gosh. R.I.P. My girl. Yes. I remember when she sang, um, sk- sk- uh, what's the mo- what's Demi Lovato song? Skyscraper. Yes. Skyscraper. Yes. And do you remember Selena Gomez and the scene? Like when she first came out with like yes. her and her little band? Yes. Why do we not talk about those bangers anymore? Why is she so naturally mogul? Naturally is such a fucking good song. She's a she's just or you are the thunder and I am yeah. the light. <laughs> yes. you know. Demi Lovato had oh, some hits too. Song. Demi had some hits too. Yeah, she I don't did. know what Demi identifies at the moment as. So I don't want to. If I misgender Demi, I'm very sorry. I'm just gonna keep saying Demi's name and that. Is yeah, not or all. like they them. Um, they that's always are safe. they they? I think so. Okay. So their music was always a banger. Skyscraper, always. the one in um that one dance movie where they're like, do you know what I'm talking about? What is the movie? Camp Rock. Oh, I, was Camp gonna, Rock. I, I almost didn't. I didn't say Camp Rock because I thought there's no fucking way you forgot the name of Camp Rock. Camp Rock. That's why I didn't say it just now. <laughs> Yeah, I did forget the name of Kim. Yeah. I didn't really like the movie, but the songs in the this movie. This is were real. This, this is me. me. I'm exactly where she I'm had one to be song now. that was like, "I still wear my Converse with, with my dress." Oh, I got with baby. my dress, baby. That's just me. That was my with the knees. anthem. With the knees together. That was. <laughs> <laughs> And I used to always think her smile to me. I used to love her smile because her smile is huge. Huge. Like, her, <laughs> huge. So, Roger, so, so it's huge. It literally is huge. I used to love it. Though. Demi and Selena were my first, like, we were talking about this the other day, gay awakenings. Like, they, yeah. and Selena specifically, though, and something about that Amanda Latina Bynes. girl. And like, shout she out Amanda giving. Bynes. Shout out Amanda Lindsay Bynes Lohan. Too. Amanda Bynes was one of them when she would like pop her gum. I'd be like, oh, my and God. Raven Baxter. Something gay just happened in me. But it's weird because Raven Baxter, but also Cheetah Girls. But separately. So, here's the thing. I've never for Raven Baxter. I always felt like she's more of a big sister vibe for me because I always felt that she looked much older than like my projected what I was finding hot at the time where Selena always looked young to me. Miley Cyrus, when she had that balayaged wig with the bang. Oh, Ow! Yeah. You better stop Miley Cyrus because I I mean I've always found Miley Cyrus to die. I think every like Disney girl and like every like like Victorious, like those girls were just my my gay awakening. Eva Longoria specifically as well. Yeah. Um also another one, I don't know if you'd remember this one. This is one from when we're really fucking young, okay? The lady who sings the all aboard the choo choo chain from yes. Choo Choo Soul. Yes. With the little hat. Oh, with the hat uh, and the body yaddy yaddy. She's on TikTok. Yeah. And she put her hat on. Bitch. She said, I might want to do this again. I said, you better. I didn't the know. The country falls she's on apart TikTok. and a I was savior just comes. I about it. Like, hmm, who's my gay weight thing? That's definitely one. She was one of them. She got on TikTok and she was like, I think I want to do this again. And I was like, the world's falling apart and the savior comes to save the day. We heroes don't always wear capes, dude. Right. <laughs> she's like, I'm back. I want to see you in the All middle of the aboard, choo-choo train. The choo-choo train. All aboard. All aboard. <laughs> choo-choo. That was my <laughs> shit. <laughs> That was my bitch, bro. No, but I, I didn't. And the Cheetah Girls. All of the Cheetah Girls. The Cheetah Girls, yeah. I used to get fucking feral over who I got to play as the Cheetah Girls on the playground. Oh, yeah. Feral. I did that a lot. 
Like, I would get mad if, like, someone tried to be, like, we're playing princesses and I well, didn't get to be Well, because they used to always want to make me be doe, which was the white girl, which, like, fine. But I <laughs> wanted to be... <laughs> I used to... I wasn't allowed to have cable when I was younger because my mom said it rots your brain, which is just her excuse for, like, not spending money on cable. My mom never had a TV either. Yeah. So we would watch ABC and Fox because that's what you could get on Antenna. And on ABC, there was something called Desperate Housewives. Don't know if you've ever watched it. The best show of all time, I think, in my opinion. It's so loaded with drama. It's a little problematic. It wouldn't pass today, but it's one of those shows that's like an oldie but a goodie. Mm -hmm. Eva Longoria plays Gabrielle Solis. I never felt so gay in my life than the moment I saw her. I was like five when the show came out. And I remember being like, wait, Desperate Housewives Housewives isn't a reality show? Desperate uh, Real Housewives is. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Me did not know. Desperate Housewives is the show about these five different women that live on the street called Wisteria Lane, and they all have different backgrounds. Like they're all like one prototype of wife. So you have like Brie Vandekamp, who's like this Christian, like redhead, who like is a husband serving, God loving, mm-hmm. God fearing woman, like whatever. But she's crazy secretly, like nuts. And she ends up being one of the fave characters. Eva Longoria is the young girl who marries the rich man and is feeling trapped in her relationship. Mm-hmm. And then there's like Lynette, who's like this mom to like five boys. that's like overwhelmed and can't fucking get her hair done because she's just too overwhelmed. And then there's Susan, who's the single parent with two, just one girl, which I think my mom is very much Susan and Lynette combined. Mm. if you watch the show like you know i don't know mm-hmm. if any of you guys have ever watched the show you should i recommend it highly well it's now we know all about it so it's thank so you. good but it's every bit of drama that you like need the only thing i would add is they don't have very many um like there's not a lot of there's one black family that enters the show and they end up being like the villain of the season of course of course and then um obviously there's a hispanic family that's the Solises, but they really body shame the little girl a lot. There's like Gabrielle Solis is a model and she has this daughter who's chubby. And like the whole thing is like, how did I have this daughter? That's this chubby ends up being that the daughter's adopted on accident because the daughter was swapped at birth with their actual daughter. Oh, so their daughter. Oh, I knew this, this fat pig wasn't mine. Exactly. The vibe I was I knew giving this fat little oinker. Fucking this little, this little nasty cow and the wasn't little girl mine. was like. I mean, like, she had to be, like, 10 when she was filming the show. And to think, like, to grow up and realize you were casted as that role because you were, like... Or do you ever think about the characters we were meant to see as fat? Oh, my God. Like, like freaking like, Selena Gomez's... Like, like Raven Baxter. Like, Harper. Harper. That's my what I was bitch thinking Harper. Yeah. Like, Sam from My Carly. It's like, Sam from My Carly. And Sam... And it's um, weird because, like... Sam was tiny. T- tiny. They're, they were all tiny. Well, I wouldn't actually say Sam as much. I think that she actually got away with eating so much because she was small, like eating so much on the show. Nobody wants to see a little fat girl pig out on TV. Yeah. Like, I know nobody wants to hear that, but it's the same it's thing. It's just the truth. It's the same thing on yeah. TikTok now where like you'll see a skinny girl like do a mukbang and it's like crazy. Crazy, She's but Nick Avocado, avocado or Trisha Paytas does it and it's like. It's like, oh, this is gross. It's it's like, disgusting. Be love is gaining some weight and everybody's yeah. like, ew, like this is what all the crab leg does. And it's like, damn, like. Like, women actually are allowed to fluctuate in their weight and be plus size and be and mid size. Eat. And also, if you want second, allowed to go eat, get second. Get thirds, go to a buffet, get fifths. Like, literally. and I definitely have, I definitely feel like that's something. Because I've been there. Bitch. Yeah, I definitely like, feel like I that's something we there. should touch on. Like, here, I, think I want to do a full, whole episode I on have body. I want a full episode on, on weight and body and stuff like that because that is something I am very knowledgeable about. And I have been through so much. Like, I, the stories I could fucking tell you guys about yeah. being a, growing up fat is like insane. Like, insane. well, like for sure. And I feel like what I dealt with as a kid was in third grade, I moved to the city and like I got chubby because I wasn't allowed to play outside because in the city I was just not allowed to like ride my bike the same way as I did in the country and the yeah. government subsidized houses. There's a million kids so you can like hang out with all the kids and go on your bike. But when I went to the city, we lived, you know, off yeah. of a road that wasn't great. for So I wasn't allowed to go ride my bike and walk up to my friend's house. So I gained right. a lot of weight. And then I came back to my old school in fifth grade and I would gained all this weight. And it was like immediately... I look back at these pictures. I was always a very tiny girl, always super tiny, but everyone was tinier. And so like because objectively of the group, I wasn't the tiniest. I was immediately fat. That's crazy because me looking back at pictures, I was chubby. Like I was a chubby girl. Like I totally like I was, but 
I still should not have been treated like no, that. Like, no, I mean, crazy. regardless. And especially, like, as somebody who has fluctuated in life in weight later on. Like, I started losing weight when I was, like, 17. Um, the way people treat you like animal and human is in. I'll try to give you all the advice in the world on how to lose. I remember, I actually remember your dad always talking about what diets you could go on. I remember talking. Oh, constantly. He's the one who made me go on Nutrisystem. I remember that. And I remember my mom loved her to death. God bless her soul. She grew up. I grew up with her being a very like granola, like wanting no high fructose corn syrup and trying to always lose weight and always aiming towards losing weight and never aiming towards feeling comfortable in her body. Mm -hmm. It was always about losing weight, no matter how small she is. And she's still like this to this day. And I've had to set her straight like five times this week alone, just because like your image of your body, how you're looking at yourself, you're projecting that onto everyone else as well. Mm -hmm. And like, I am physically so beyond comfortable in my body at this point. It's Mm -hmm. taken me 24 years to get to this point where I'm comfortable in how I look no matter what I like fluctuate as Mm -hmm. and for my mother to look at me and see something about me to fix can feel so discouraging like well especially like and we're the same size and how do you look at me you're telling yourself you're so disgusting you're so grossed out by yourself and and you know we're like the same bra size we probably Mm -hmm. wear that around the same size so do you look at me and think how disgusting I am you need to fix that because that is something that within yourself you shouldn't feel and you should not project that onto others ever well I also grew up in like uh we'll touch on this more I just wanted to like say a couple things but we grew up in I grew up in a t-shirt to the beach family. Oh yeah. Like me my too. whole family's wearing t-shirts to the beach and basketball shorts. Like nobody wants their body to be seen or whatever. And for me it's so important for now that I have a daughter. Like I'm not really comfortable where I am in my weight right now, but I mean this is who I am right now. Yeah. What am I going to do about it? I don't have time to work out like yeah. without but I mean now I can talk about my weight and not break down crying. Like it's not that serious yeah. to me anymore. But um now like shit even last year like i had just had a baby like in less than less than a year before last summer and i was wearing a bikini to the beach Mm -hmm. just let my stomach hang out because i want her to know any body that you have is worthy of being seen or not being seen if you don't want to but you shouldn't feel like you can't wear certain shit or feel feminine be in certain places or feel feminine feel young and cute and all of that just because you're you're fat which and i feel like that that was the biggest thing for me is i objectively again i was so tiny but compared to the people i hung around compared to the people that were my age group i was considered bigger i never i never saw myself as big until fourth grade and that's when i developed my first eating disorder and it was because people told me how i should view myself because of how their parents told them how they should view others so it's just like this crazy chain of like well, we all wouldn't feel this way if it weren't this culmination of like you're less feminine, you're less beautiful, you're less worthy if you are and, over this BMI. And which BMI is bullshit. So bullshit. But also, um, shit, I was going to say that. Oh, um, kids don't take into account genetics. No. I carry no my idea. weight the exact way my mom does and like the exact way my dad does. They both carry weight in their stomach. That's exactly how I carry my weight. I am shaped like my mom. Like, there's nothing I'm going to ever be able to do to be stick thin. Well, if like, we I all... have big hips. I have wide ribs. Like, I have yeah. a shape or whatever. Like, cool. Thanks. Shout out God for that one. But I'm never going to be flat stomach unless I get surgery. If y'all ever see me pop out with a flat stomach, I got a tummy tuck. Like, yeah. <laughs> dead, dead ass. But I don't know. Even if we shout out the big girls. Even if we all ate the same and worked out the same amount, we would all literally look different because there's just different body types. I know people always are like, big boned, it doesn't exist. Yes, but different frame and shape bodies and like how Mm -hmm. you hold your weight is all genetic. How you hold your muscle is genetic. That's why some people have giant booties and some people literally can't grow an ass. Mm -hmm. Is because our bodies are genetically predisposed to how we're gonna look, how our muscle is gonna grow, Mm -hmm. where our muscle is gonna grow. And that's something you can look up on 23andMe. You can find out how what your muscle composition looks like, what your ancestral muscle composition looks like that that's a thing and so i didn't know that that's cool yeah it's so. just crazy but obviously people don't think about genetics people just always are like oh you're fat and gross and fucking you're fat and gross and it's like i'm and that's another thing is like i've always said the way that i was able to overcome my eating disorder and my and my appearance issues like i used to be probably one of the most insecure people i've ever met and it showed in how i looked at myself how i viewed others and stuff like that and there was just a switch in me one day it was kind of a mixture of things it was like I look like my mom and I don't want to ever resent looking like my mother like my mother to me is so vibrant and beautiful and amazing but also I literally am stuck this way 
Yeah. And what the fuck am I going to do living like I hate myself and letting that be the most interesting thing about me for the rest of my life? My hatred for myself is my biggest personality yeah. trait. I would hate that. Yeah. I also remember, this is like kind of cringe a little bit, <laughs> but I remember in high school when I first started losing weight. Well, right before I started losing weight, but like this is when I was my heaviest. Like I was just, I'm not going to say my weight because I don't want anybody to think like whatever, but I was at my heaviest. And, um... I remember sitting in the mirror, like on the ground, sitting in my full length mirror, staring at myself and saying over and over again, I am beautiful. I am beautiful. I am beautiful. And like sobbing, crying while I'm saying this, because this is not love I had shown to myself pretty much ever crying, saying that I'm beautiful. And I swear to God, I woke up the next morning and looked in the mirror and was like, I am beautiful. Like, oh, my God, I am. beautiful. Yeah. Affirmations. It's so crazy. Like how you can really like trick your brain like. Fake it till you make it is yep. dead ass real. Like you can literally tell yourself in the mirror, yes. like I'm confident, I'm sexy, I'm beautiful. And if you tell yourself that all the time, it really will I work. did this thing in 11th grade actually where I just like one day was like, I don't actually want to hate myself anymore. I want to feel confident. I want to walk into a room and feel like my energy is like surpassing what it used to. I just want to feel like mm-hmm. people are so sure that I'm confident that they don't feel like they can even try to tear me down. Like that was mm-hmm. like the thing I wanted to do. And I had never heard of the theory of like – of manifestations and like reformation no that is affirmations new-ish. but i it's not new i but think a lot of people come to that conclusion on their own i think before it had a word to it but i remember one day i was just like i'm fucking tired of feeling like this i'm just gonna act like i'm the hottest person in the room until i actually feel like i am and that was something i did in 11th grade everyone saw, talked about how cocky i was how full of myself i was like it was a big thing i think people really thought about me is that i was just like this really self-centered i used to remember people used to always try like because we were friends people would always try to like sneak talk shit and be like emily's just so full of herself yeah and i remember that was like a big thing but about i used me. to always be like why why, why not be but also I, I really wasn't it was me trying at that age at that stage And that point of time, it was really just me trying to convince myself that I really believe those things. And it worked. I mean, like by 12th grade, I was like, even if I'm not the most beautiful person in the room, right? Like objectively, Mm -hmm. in my eyes, I am because I'm my person. This is who I have to live with for the rest of my life. And like, I am so beautiful in my own eyes. And that's how I felt by 12th grade. And like. I mean, like, it changes how your perspective. No one can call you ugly if you know you're not going to believe it. If mm-hmm. their objective is to tear you down and make you feel bad and they know you, they can't do that because you're so full of yourself, thank God. Mm-hmm. Good thing. So just be fucking full of yourself. Be so conceited. Be so eh, conceited. Like, don't be like a piece of well, shit. Well, you don't have to be arrogant and think you're better than everybody yeah. else, but you can be your best self and feel like your best self and be happy to be your best you self. You know that when you walk into a room, your energy and who you are, how you look is completely unique to yourself. Mm-hmm. And I think the uniqueness of that is really what I thrived on. I, I think was that's unique. what I've been struggling with a lot lately, because um, especially when you have a kid and stuff like that, it just changes so much so fast that you kind of just forget, like, I forget who you are, but like you have to come back to terms with things that make you happy for you. Not for the baby. Not for the baby. So like I've gotten way back into my art again. Crocheting. This this has helped like so much. Doing a lot of digital art has helped so much. Yeah. Like all of that has helped like just getting out of the house, like allow yourself to get out of the house, like stuff like that. But it's still weird like because even now like you go from being your own person to somebody's mom and when people see you, all they see is somebody's mom. They don't see. I don't. You know. Oh, thanks. <laughs> but like, I feel like a lot of people like just see like a mom now, a mom now, basically. And I'm still Tegan. Like, damn, I'm still 23. Like, I could still be young and turn. Like, I think the that the reason that I'm good about that, because we, we talked about it in our first episode, how I I still treat you like a human being. Like, I'm mm-hmm. not like just like Tegan, the mom, Tegan. Meh. Um, right. I experienced my sister having a kid very young. Uh So I think that I'm lucky because a lot of people, their siblings are two years from them, right? Like they don't get to see their kid unless like they have some teen pregnancy. My sister had a kid and that was at a normal age for her and it was completely normal situation. I had to kind of like, oh, that's just still my sister. She just has a baby now and I love the baby and he's his own person too. He's not just Mm -hmm. an extension of my sister. It's just another person. It's just another person. That's how like, you know, like that's how birth works. It's like a new person. So (laughs) you like make a baby and you give birth to it. And then they're a human being. But (laughs) But, so I I think that I'm good about it because of that. I think I've had like training, if that makes sense, on how to treat people that are mothers. Well, I think because moms do become very, we're unrelatable. Like you can't, you cannot. To some degree. Right. But But not really. But at the same time, it's like, you've been tired before like you've had to take care of people like 
you kind of do know what I'm going yeah. through. I just have to do it at like kind of an extreme level, but like at the same time, like I don't know. I just feel like people act like once you have a kid, like you are you're just, boring. You're just a mom, and you're just boring. It's like I'm literally the same exact person I was. I just pushed a baby out of me. My biggest fear would be dating as a single mom. Like, and I oh yeah, I commend already, mothers who are able to get out themselves out there. And I just told Jazz, I'm like. Do not. Bro, I, I'm like, if we break up, bro, I can't, I'm not going to date anybody else. Like, well, like that, And it's not even just because of you. It's just because I literally... First of all, I'd never be able to trust another man around my daughter. That's my main thing. That would I would never, thing. ever be able to have a man around my daughter. And I wouldn't feel, be able to have one around either. I safe and secure that he wasn't going to hurt her. Yeah. I, would just I wouldn't either. I think that's my biggest fear would be, A, there's this big stigma around, like, if she's got a baby, like, she basically she's tapped, she's clapped, you can't have her. Mm-hmm. That literally is so fucking misogynistic. It's so and it's so misogyny. funny how men actually do love single moms. Like love I don't know. them. They're men like front, mommy. Men front like they don't like single moms. Like they don't like um fat women. Like they don't like dark skinned women. But they make them they feel comforted. Always pretend. But if you look through that search history, or if mm-hmm. you look through like his likes, it's gonna be fat women, <laughs> dark skinned women, like all like big booby milfy mommies. But basically i think that it's because of the comfort they feel like it reminds them of their mother literally i think that that's it and that that makes them feel ashamed maybe but that's not our fault that's your fault that's your fault that you're attracted to your mother um shut up freud yeah i i just actually made a video that i have in my drafts that i was going to post today about our womanhood and how we all are bred to be misogynistic without realizing oh, yeah. we all have misogyny in us, even if we doubt it, even if we just the same way as we're born as racist. White women are white people are born racist because that is the world we are brought into. That is what we're predisposed to. And we have to unravel that as we age and get older. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have to learn how to avoid microaggressions and not do things that are culturally normalized that are still racist. Yeah. And it's the same thing with misogyny, that these things are culturally, culturally normalized, but are still misogynistic. Like, mm-hmm. Even I've started to notice and resent the joke about Karens because Karens essentially are just women who are defending themselves, asking for their right food, their right meal. They want their money back. They're standing up for themselves. Right. Obviously, there are women that are bad people. There are women that suck. Right. They're just the same way there are men. But I get this what, idea I think I get of Karens. What you mean, though. I, I think I get what you mean as far as that. I think, I think if think it you... was a man that did what, it, what the Karen, the typical Karen does of like getting upset or fighting for what they want something to be done right if it were a man it's a man who is brave it's a man who is getting things done right. and there are i mean i know the karen well right I started say, with good I was gonna intent say, i was gonna say i get what you mean like i get what you're saying as far as like you don't you you like karens are staring standing up for themselves or whatever the case may be i feel like the harm in it is because now men feel like they can just call like exactly any them. woman, a Karen or whatever, if they just have an opinion or if they don't. But agree with actual them. Karens, like actual, actual, the actual OG Karens, Karens. Fuck y'all. Yeah. <laughs> fuck y'all big time. But like, I get what you mean. Yes. It's harmful for everybody because of that. I totally get because it. I and think that it just it boils down to now when a woman defends herself, when a woman isn't agreeing with you, when a woman yeah. is upset at something publicly, you pull out your camera, you call her a Karen and she's a Karen. OK. Uh, she's just a woman that's upset. She's just a woman asking for the right meal. She's just a woman asking mm-hmm. you to give her the price that you're supposed to be giving her. Right. And I do understand the OG Karen is the white supremacist right. woman with a cut that just like we get is it. racist. We get I get it. But now it's turned into this about, new thing. We're talking about the repercussions of that. It's turning into this new thing. And I think that where I was going with that is that this internalized misogyny is something that has to be unraveled throughout your whole life you can never fully say that you have no misogynistic tendencies inside of you because it's what we're bred to see ourselves as and to view our peers as are these norms that have been set in standard for us that are like why is she wearing that like that doesn't fit her body right okay once you're like 17 if you haven't realized that that's misogynistic i don't know what to tell you yeah but But i just think that unraveling your misogyny is really important because we're just smarter and better than you yeah and having well having (laughs) female yeah (laughs) Well, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Having female friends, too, once you've unraveled a lot of that misogyny. I used to be the type of girl that was like, I love to be friends with guys. Once you learn to unravel some of that misogyny, with female bonds are just are so unmatched. great. Like, they're and I unmatched. And feel like we just get so deep with each yeah. other. Like, 
you can see two men have that have been friends. Mates. Yeah, you can have two friends, two male friends that have been friends for fucking years, and they don't have any. And they level don't get intimacy. deep as we do, as we do in two weeks. No, like, and there's no like intimate. I want to pick your brain. Like, yeah, I want to know every thought you've ever had in your cuddle. life. A little cuddle, like let's play with each other's hair. Right. I think that women just get each other on this deeper level. We think in a di- like deeper way. Like we were girls together. Yeah, like we were like little babies. I know. And I just think that. All the female relationships, female, I hate that word, but all the Me women too. relationships I've had, like friendships, have just been so almost monogamous in the way that we like. We're like in love. In love. Yeah. Like I always feel like there's just an intimacy to female relationships that yeah. aren't there for males. No, because <laughs> men don't have a friend that they think to themselves, like, is this romantic? Or is this, or is <laughs> this I want to have a candle for dinner with you? still platonic? Like, <laughs> I feel like now that I'm older, it's. Not so much that. Yeah, I don't have to blur the lines anymore. Yeah, but with no, like no. Aldiana, Aldiana and me were like in love. <laughs> no, literally, that's how I was with you know who. Like, yeah, literally. Like, I used to think to myself, like, should we date? Like, <laughs> are we in love? Yeah. But I do. I just love that I have a ninety-eight percent audience, and it's all female. Ninety-eight percent female audience, and I love Shout all out of the you girls. Guys. I'm thinking that this is where we'll end the podcast. Yeah, this has got to be the end, bro. My back is hurting so fucking bad from this bra. I, I could tell that it's two hours. We just talked. Yeah, I'm done talking Holy to you. I'm shit. so over talking to you. Can I please, <laughs> please let we me go home? We never hang out again. I <laughs> please let me go home. The but third yeah. and last episode. Thank you guys for joining <laughs> us. We love you so much. Um, follow us on Instagram, Spotify. Follow us everywhere you get your podcasts. Go on YouTube. There's a video format there. Her Instagram and everything is Tegan Rose C. Mine is Makeup by Imaza. You can find me as Imaza on TikTok. We love you guys so much. And we can't wait to see you next week. Next Thursday at noon. Yep. Fourth episode, <laughs> baby. Love you. Bye.